What it do? Bad sound crew. Hey man, listen, today I'm here to talk about the flukiest fighters in the UFC. These are the fluky flukesters that are just losing the entire fight or their only way to win is to land one perfect shot, one perfect submission. You'll get what I'm talking about when we get into this video, but I promised you guys a tier list last week. I wasn't able to do it, so here it is today. Let's start off straight away. Kevin Holland, this fucking guy, man. What do I even say about Kevin Holland, bro? I'm going to put him in the C tier because it hasn't taken him too far. Obviously, it's gotten him some big wins. He does have a tendency of just getting taken down, getting mogged, you know, barely able to touch his opponent, and then he hits them with one good shot or he lands a takedown, subs them randomly. Kevin Holland definitely has the fluky flukester player build. Good power, long and lanky, good chin. Everything else is like, bro, are you going to move your fucking head at any point? So I'm going to put Kevin Holland in at the C tier. I'm going to make a video later this week about Kevin Holland because I do need, I do have some things I need to say about him after UFC 299, but I'm going to put him in the C tier to start off. Let's move on to one of the low level fluky flukesters. He's actually pretty talented, but he does have a bit of that in him. I'm going to put Shavkat in the D tier and I'm going to put JDM right there with him. So Shavkat and JDM, they're alternate skins. Okay. Don't get mad. Um, but Shavkat Rachmanov, this guy will literally be getting tagged the fuck up. This guy will be missing everything. He'll be barely able to take you down. And then bro looks up at the clock, locks the fuck in and clutches up with his fluky flukes to like sub random submission, ch beats you up with some random combo. You're fucked. Shavkat Rachmanov just makes it happen every time. That's why he's in the D tier because he is talented. He's beating good fighters. It's not a fluke, but he just has a bit of a fluky kind of style, if that makes sense. Like he's just... He's having a fight where you go, fuck, man, he's not looking that good. And then, boom, he just finds something. He sorts it out. Like I said, he locks the fuck in, dude. So, Shavkat, you can go D tier, all right, dude? And, an and another guy that I think, frankly, this guy's a bit of a fluky flukester. A lot of people are telling me I'm wrong, but I got to say it. Okay, somebody had to do it. Uh, uh, Sam, uh, hey, I desire. I'm going to put Alex Pereira in the D tier. Again, is he a fluky fighter? Not really, but he has the build of one. He's a tall, lanky motherfucker. He can be getting hit with random bullshit, get taken down, pulling guillotines. Like, you just worry that he's going to lose, and then boom, one left hook, it's over. And with that in mind, I mean, you have to put him in this tier. I might even put him in C tier, but I'm going to leave him at D tier because I know the Pereira Glazers are going to get mad. Listen, bro, he won't let you hit, bro. He's with Pollyanna Viana, bro. Your time has passed, so you don't have to glaze him too hard in the comments, but... I'm going to put Alex Pereira in the D tier. Bro can be down four zip. Hit that left hook just like bedtime, just like Steve Ursaig. And that's the end of that. So Alex Pereira, you're going in the D tier. Let's move on to one of the reasons I created this video. There's like pillars of the fluky flukester fighting style. This man is one of them. This man is a cornerstone of being a complete and not a flukester. Marlon Chito Vera. I was going to make this before UFC 299, but 299 was proof again. If this guy doesn't, I'm I'm a bit confused actually, guys. I'm not. I was gonna shit on him. I'm just a bit confused. I thought Cheeto was gonna win, guys. I was actually lying when I said I thought O'Malley was gonna win. I actually thought Cheeto was gonna win because that he won the first fight, and I was just wondering in this fight why he didn't perennial nerve kick O'Malley again. I mean, it worked so good the first time. I was just kind of confused why he didn't do it again this fight. I was wondering the same in his last couple fights as well why he didn't do that to Corey Sanhagen or you know why he didn't do that to Jose Aldo. Bit confusing sometimes in the fight IQ, but this is one of the greatest fighters of all time. I mean, he finished the the bantamweight goat, Dominic Cruz. We need to start talking about Cheeto being the goat of the sport. But listen, bro, all jokes aside, Cheeto is the perfect example of what the fuck I'm talking about. This guy be down 50-44, and I'm still like, oh fuck! Like he he tried to do he tried to use his fucking takeover, his fluky flukes to takeover in round five against O'Malley. He used that shit too late with the last punch of the fight. But this guy literally can be losing. 40, 37, 40, 32 or some shit and hit you with a front kick. And that's the end of that. So um, like this guy's entire fighting style is almost built to be a fluky flukester. And for that reason, welcome to the A tier. You have earned it, bro. The Frankie Edgar knockout. He's down two zip to Frankie Edgar. I mean, come on. What the fuck are you doing, bro? You know, Sean O'Malley literally lands nothing except for a fucking calf kick. And that's the end of that. So this guy is a truly special breed of fighter. He's going in the A tier. Let's move on to... One of my favorites in the UFC, but I got to admit, bro, I am a bit of a fluky flukester. I, I've landed big spinning elbow. I get knocked out in the fight and I come back and I win. You got to admit Yuri Prask is kind of a fluky flukester, bro. You got to fucking admit, dude. 
Come on, man. He was losing to Glover Teixeira. He was losing to fucking Dominic. No, he wasn't. But he was losing to Vulcan Uzdemir. This guy literally just is like that Moon Knight meme of just random bullshit. Go. Like, that's how this guy fights, dude. And Yuri Prohaska can be down in a fight, lock up a fucking rear naked choke, hit you with a right hand out of nowhere. I'm telling you, bro, him versus Pereira was the ultimate fluke off. And Pereira fucking, you know, Pereira proved there's levels to the fluky flukester because he was losing to Yuri. Which, for some reason, it, hear me out on this, walk with me on this. I'm going to put Yuri above Alex because he lost to Alex Pereira, which proves that he's a bit of a flukester. Whereas Pereira proved he's actually elite by not getting fluked by this guy and fluking him. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Fucking hell. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, but Yuri, you're going in the C tier. Let's move on. Bro, don't put me in the fucking tier list, bro. It wasn't a fluke, bro. I, 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 knew, I was setting up the head kick on Usman the whole time, bro. I wanted to be, I wanted to be losing, bro. Leon Edwards, I'm not going to put him any higher. He's not a fluky fighter, but he does. He did win a belt off a, off a, a fluky fucking moment. Like, he set up the head kick. I'm not saying the head kick was a fluke. I'm just saying that's a one in a million type moment right there. And he only got that head kick because he got pulled off the fence by Herb Dean. You know what I'm saying, dude? So it's not really like a, oh my God, it was like a competitive fight. And then boom, he lands that shit. Bro literally got saved by Herb Dean. And for that reason, Leon, bro, bro don't put me in the fucking tier list, bro. Uh, I'm not flukester, bro. <laughs> bro, I meant to do it. Leon Edwards, you're going D tier. Let's move on up the tier list to one of another, again, another pillar of the fluky flukester style. This man is like the player comparison you think of. If you're going to be a fluky flukester, you got to get on this guy's fucking level. I'm putting Makayev in the A tier. This guy literally loses every fight and then he decides, you know what? I better fucking win this shit, Loki. Throws up the round three submission. It never fails. It never, it never lets him down. Even when he doesn't get it, the judges clutch up for this fucking guy against Alex Perez. You know, he pulls off all the right moves just enough to win every single time. Every single time I'm watching this guy fight, I've picked him to be losing and then win somehow. And even still, it's amazing. I'll be watching the fight and be like, oh, fuck, he's going to lose. Oh, why did I pick him? And he does it every single fucking time. This is what he does. It's illegal. But Muhammad Makayev, one of the goats of the fluky flukes to fighting style. Let's move on to an old school fighter. He's retired. But I have to give him his credit because he did build a superstar career, a legendary title run off being a fluky flukester. Listen, dude, me hitting a Ben Askren with a one in a million flying knee was completely necessary. Super necessary. That shit was not a fluke. I'm better than this guy everywhere, bro. I'm telling you, bro. If Masvidal does not land that flying knee, bro is literally flipping burgers right now. <laughs> now he's eating burgers, bro. Have you seen those fucking pictures of him? But listen, dude. Oh, hey, Masvidal. Bro, congratulations, dude. Because that flying knee was one in a million. You would never land that shit again. I'm salty, bro. I don't care. Ben Askren's my boy. Um, yeah, that this guy literally built a fucking career off the biggest fluke of all time. Everyone knows pretty much what would have happened if he got taken down. I think he would have got mugged for three rounds, to be honest. But he is a good fighter. I'm not going to put him in the A tier because he is actually a good fighter. I do like Jorge Masvidal, but his only way to win against Usman and Colby and Ben Askren was via fluke like that was the only way he was going to win was via some random bullshit like a flying knee or a fucking uppercut as they're coming in um yeah jorge masvidal definitely belongs on this tier list i'm gonna put him in at the b tier because he built such a great legacy off of it um yeah shout out to george bro i didn't have a fucking obama form by the way either bro let me move on to the only woman on this tier list and listen boys she's the og I'm putting Jessica Andrade in the A tier. This motherfucker literally won a belt on some Cheeto Vera shit. She is what Cheeto wanted to be. She was literally getting 10 aided by Rose Namajunas, which, by the way, Jesus Christ, it's WMMA, bro. How are you getting fucking dropped to left, right, and center? But listen, bro, she's getting tagged the fuck up by Rose Namajunas. She's getting beat the fuck up. Literally just decides, you know what? I'm just going to pick this bitch up. Slams her on her head. One in a million type slam. Wins the belt, immediately gets mogged by undeserving contender Wei Li Zhang. Like, if you, that doesn't prove what I'm saying about Jessica Andrade. I don't know what does. Literally every three fights, she just brutally finishes someone and then gets mogged for the next year of her life. Every single time, Jessica Andrade... And Amanda Lemos is like the reincarnation of that. Amanda Lemos is like a reincarnation of Jessica Andrade in terms of the fluky flukester style. 
but I'm going to put Andrade here. I'm going to give the OG fluky flukester at women's uh, MMA some respect. I'm going to put her in the A tier. Jessica Andrade, welcome to the club. I've got a few fighters left, and these are all legends of the game, of the fluke game, all right? This guy literally went on the craziest title run of all time simply by being a goofy goober, dude. Drickus Duplessis, you're going C tier, bro. Drickus Duplessis, especially before the Whitaker fight. Holy fuck, this guy's pulling full mount. This guy's pulling fucking side control and somehow still winning. And even the Robert Whitaker KO, I know we all glazed him. I know we were all like, wow, what a performance he beats Izzy. Rewatch that KO. He literally does not believe that he's just chinned Robert Whitaker. He can't even fucking believe it, bro. He didn't even realize, bro. He landed the jab. He jumps out of frame. He literally jumps out of, out of frame. He jumps out of the screen. You can't see him anymore. He has his hands up. By the time Whitaker has gotten fallen down, gotten back up, started walking away, Drickus is still covering up, expecting to be head kicked. He goes, oh, fuck, I actually hit him. And then, boom, finishes him. So, Drickus Duplessis, this guy is a complete uh, legend of the fluky flukes to style. I'm going to put him C tier because he has beat good fighters. Again, I'm going to give him some legit respect as a fighter, but you have to admit, the way that this, this, this guy fucking fights, the way that he hit that right hand in his debut when the guy was doing a spinning elbow, even the Derek Brunson fight, getting completely fucking mogged. Brunson just gasses out like he's Shamil Gaziu. This guy's a fluky flukester of the highest order. I'm going to put him in the C tier just because he won the belt. I got to give him some respect. But let's move on to a new entry into the fluky flukester, uh, you know, pantheon. Listen, man, what the eagle does, the eagle loses the entire fight. And then he throws up a triangle in round three and he wins the fight. You know, I had to go up. I had to go up in the mountains. I had to break my beak. I had to get fucked up by Yair Rodriguez, and I had to submit him in round two in front of my ex, who I cheated on, and I had to make her the bad guy. I had to do it. You know, that's what the Eagle does in the rebirth. Brian the Eagle Ortega, this guy literally losing most of his fights. I remember when he fought Moicano. He's literally getting pieced the fuck up, losing the entire fight. Moicano is just like, fuck it, I'll just shoot a takedown. Immediately subs him. Immediately subs him. Like, say goodbye. Get fucked. Um... Yair Rodriguez, piecing him the fuck up, literally getting 10 7 in round one. Round three, or round two, turns it around. Boom, it's over. It's over. It ends for you. Say goodbye. So, Brian Ortega, you have to put him in here because he does have the skills to fluke anybody. He could sub Taporia with some bullshit. He could be losing to Taporia the entire time and throw up a submission. You have to give him his respect. You have to put him in the B tier. I'm only putting him above Drickus, even though I explained a lot of why Drickus is a flukester, because Brian Ortega has had fights where he's got his ass whooped, and you realize, okay, it's not actually like going to happen every single time. So I have to put him in the B tier. He did get exposed a little bit against some other guys. Same with these guys in the A tier, especially this guy right here. Uh, but yeah, Ortega, you're going B tier. Let's move on to another fighter that inspired me to make this list. Truly one of my heroes. This guy is never, I've never seen a guy do so much with so little actual like things to do in a fight. I don't know what the fuck this guy does in his fights, but somehow he keeps winning. Gamrot, you're going A tier, bro. Gamer army, rise up. This man is getting to the fucking belt. I'm fully convinced this guy's going to drick us his way to the belt. He's going to fluke his way to the belt with even less finishes, even less style points. At least drick is finishing these guys. Pause. Well, not for, he drick, he probably wouldn't say pause to that, but I'm going to say pause to it. But dude, Gamrot, injury TK over Fiziev. Split decision robbery against Armin Sarukian. That's going to age so well as well, dude. He's literally going to carry that for the rest of his life. RDA, life and death victory. What's next? Justin Gaethje, like, breaks his rib defending a takedown, and Gamrot gets the W in the BMF belt. That's the level of fluky flukes that this guy is. This guy's almost like belonging on a fucking wizard tier list, let alone a, a, a flukes to tier list. But... I have to put him in the A tier. There is two fighters left. I just opened the files on my computer. My bad, bro. Um, there is two fighters left. One of these guys is another cornerstone of the Flukester community. And then there is the S tier. There is the GOAT of this style. Let me start off with this man who literally encapsulates this perfectly. Before there was Cheeto, there was Paul Craig. Before there was Makayev, round three sub, there was Paul Craig, round three submission, dude. Every fucking time, this guy is the most unpickable fighter of all time. If you pick him to win, he will get his ass kicked. He will get knocked the fuck out. If you pick the other guy confidently, which you should, 
if he's fighting a prospect that is undefeated, that would surely kick his ass. Nine out of ten times. Uh, 999,000 out of uh, 10,000 times or whatever the fuck. He will submit them in round one or round three. Brutally. Paul Craig almost is the GOAT, almost is the S tier of this tier list, but there is one man that reigns supreme. My balls was hot. Black Beast in this hole. I'm putting Derek Lewis on the S tier because this guy literally has no redeeming skills whatsoever. This guy literally is not doing shit in his fights. He legit just stands there until he chins you somehow. Curtis Blades beating the fuck out of Derek Lewis from pillar to post. Striking as well, just completely outstriking him. One uppercut. All right, I'm getting a title shot. What the fuck? Every single time. Every single fucking time this guy wins, he is losing. And then he just throws up a KO. He's built such an insane legacy, such an insane career off it. He literally has no other skills except just standing up, jumping at you, right? Sometimes he'll just bullshit KO you in 10 seconds, like Delima. Derek Lewis is the GOAT of the Flukesters, in my opinion. Let me know your thoughts down below. This is my tier list. Did I miss anybody? Did I put anybody in the wrong spot? Who, in your opinion, is the best Flukester of all time? Uh, let me know in the comments. Make sure you guys subscribe because at 20k, we're going to do the impressions tier list that everybody's been waiting for. I'm going to include every single impression that I do on that tier list. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see it. Drop a like on the video as well. Go follow me on Instagram at BedtimeMMA. And I will see you in the next video, boys. Goodbye.